Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG Ingwen. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haolin. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们西平方的节目 NG Ingwen。我是 Angela. We have a great show for you today with our good friend Skimmy, who's known around the Taiwanese community as you guessed it, Skimmy. Yes, Skimmy. I know, an interesting name, but it's quite a cute one. S K I M M Y, Skimmy. 那今天我们非常幸运的邀请到了各位的网络闺蜜 Skimmy 来到我们 NG 英文节目，跟大家分享她的新书，还有 YouTube 频道，跟她呢一路走来学英文的心路历程。But before we get to the interview with Skimmy and I. Angela is going to help us break down some of the cultural differences Skimmy spoke about, particularly a fun little story about how she used to express time in Chinese versus English. All right, so take it away, Angela, on NG English. 好的，没问题 ，John， 谢谢你的详细介绍。那没有错，今天我们就要来聊聊怎么用英文来谈时间。请各位听众朋友赶快把 NG Cheat Sheet 这个 NG 英文专属的笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。那在待会的访谈中 ，Skimmy 会讲到说啊，有一次他想要用英文来表达这句“八小时好久哦”，但是不知道“小时”要怎么用英文说，就直接中翻音讲成 “small time”， 也就是说“八小时”就变成 “eight small time”。但他后来就越想越不对啊，觉得怎么看就是怪怪的。后来上网查，才发现原来“小时”是要说 “hour”，h o u r。不是他想的 small time。那现在你可能想说，现在我们已经知道小时是 hour， 那其他的分钟啊、秒啊，可不可以顺便跟我们讲嘞？当然喽，既然我们讲到了 hour 小时，当然也要来认识认识其他时间单位喽。分钟的话是 minute， minute， m i n u t e。那秒的话就是 second， second， 很容易吧？那不过既然单位都学了。当然要来给他实际运用一下喽。一天工作八个小时，八个小时的话可以说 eight hours， eight hours。那一堂课四十分钟就是 forty minutes， forty minutes。大家有发现，只要在单位前面加上数字就可以了吗？哎，不错，很厉害。那接下来一分钟有六十秒的六十秒，英文又可以怎么说嘞？想一想，六十是 sixty， 所以六十秒就是 sixty seconds， 很棒哦。那我们现在再来挑战稍微进阶一点的，像今天跟朋友约好说，哎，晚上要看电影哦，电影是九点开始，不要迟到。那九点要怎么讲嘞？我们可以直接用数字 nine 来表达，或是也可以说 nine o'clock， nine o'clock。啊，那如果是九点半要怎么讲啊？哎，别紧张，九点半拆开来看的话，就是九跟三十嘛，所以我们可以说 nine thirty， nine thirty。那最后再给大家一题，像是明天要搭高铁去台南，火车七点二十分发车，这样子要怎么用英文说啊？来来来，仔细想一想哦，想到了吗？没错，七是 seven。那二十是 twenty， 所以就可以说是 seven twenty， seven twenty。各位有发现吗？当我们在表达时间的时候，通常不会把单位放进去哦，不会说七点二十是 seven o'clock twenty minutes， 不是不是不是，而是直接用数字 seven twenty 来表达。这边要小心哦。好啦，那希望刚才讲的这些对你的语言学习之路有所帮助。如果有漏掉、没有听到，或是没有写下来的，也不用担心，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时要听几次就给他听几次。那如果大家都已经准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听我们网络闺蜜 Skimmy 的分享吧。Thank you, as always, Miss Angela Ma, for that NG Ingwen breakdown. Today on NG Ingwen, I am joined by an author, YouTuber, blogger. An all-around superstar. So, everyone, please welcome my good friend Skimmy.、Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Skimmy. Nice. Thank you for making some time for us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So you are just coming off quite an exciting book promotion. Is that correct? 访谈开始，我们 YouTube 网红 Skimmy 分享到说啊，他几个月前在七月的时候，他 published 
出版了他人生中的第一本书，哎，所以之前常常都在做这个 promotion， 做宣传，跟上节目啊，上 interviews， 或是这个跟其他 YouTuber 合作录制一些其他影片等等哦。那到底是什么样的一本书嘞？如果对感情世界、对两性关系有兴趣的听众朋友们，可要仔细听喽。Skimmy 说啊，他这本书的主要内容是关于这个 love and relationship， 是有关于这个感情关系哦，像是一本我们常讲的这个工具书，这个 a tool book， 让读者呢可以借由这本书的帮助，变得更有魅力 ，more charismatic， 也更了解自己，了解要怎么用更好的方式来跟人家做互动。那我们赶快来认识认识这位美女 YouTuber Skimmy. Yes, I published my first book back in July, and I've been busy doing some、um, interview and some collaboration videos for my YouTube channel. So yeah, it was a it was an exciting journey. That's amazing! Congratulations. So, what is this book about? So this book is about love. It's about love relationship.、Mm. It's a tool book for people to be more charismatic and to have a better understanding in themselves, and in order to、um, healthily interact with、um, other people. That's incredible. I think that's such talent and skills that we we are not really taught in our daily lives. Yes, yes. So that's incredible that you're diving into that. Yes, it's a um, it's my passion. So I love to dig about love relationship and to really think about how to make deep connection with um other people. Yeah,、mm-hmm. that's fantastic. And is that kind of the the purpose of your YouTube channel as well? 那上段呢，我们聊到 Skimmy 他出的这本以两性关系为主轴的书。那他的 YouTube 频道嘞，他都是拍些什么样的影片啊？ Skimmy 说，他的频道也是主要跟感情还有 self development 这个自我成长有关哦。那当然啦，也还有一些其他相关主题，但是他都会比较用文学的角度，或是插入相关电影片段的方式来切入，跟大家分享他的一些看法。那待会主持人 John 也会提到说呢，其中有一部影片他觉得很好笑，是 Skimmy 他扮男装演出的，而且这位男生还有个名字哎，叫做 Scott。那 Skimmy 说，因为他刚成立频道的时候，还不确定他的影片会走什么样的风格、什么样的路线。他当时是想说，哎，可以尝试这个 comedian， 这个搞笑喜剧演员。但后来觉得自己好像还是比较喜欢谈有关感情的事情，所以他才开始把频道定位在这个两性关系这一块哦。那不过呢，他还是会加入一些搞笑元素、一些搞笑观点，这个 perspective。在里面，像他呢，还是会装扮成各式各样的角色，让影片比较有趣一点，不会那么枯燥乏味。那同时也让他的观众更清楚了解他要表达的是什么。Yes, my YouTube channel is also about love relationship and about self development and some other related topics. But I will dive into this topic. From a more like a literature sharing and movie sharing kind of perspective, so I use a lot of famous movies to talk about some certain topics as well. That's awesome. So I do know that you kind of you add a lot of humor to some of your YouTube videos. One I saw you dressed up as a guy. What what、yes. is this about? <laughs> His name is Scott. Oh, he has a name. He has a yes, character. His name is Scott, and because、um, at first, when I first started my YouTube channel, I wasn't really sure what kind of direction or what kind of videos I want to do. So actually, at first, I wanted to do like a comedian type of channel. Like I would voice dub for famous comics or um, um, famous anime and stuff. But then I realized love relationship is something that I want to talk about more. But I do add in some like humor kind of perspective into my love relationship related videos. I would dress up as a guy and a princess type of girl and a tomboy type of girl. So yeah, I keep a lot of weeks in my in my home <laughs> and I just like play with myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Well, I'm I'm actually really enjoying that because that adds a kind of a unique perspective, like you're saying, and, and allows you to kind of role play with a lot of different. Yes, yes. I think that way it helps my audience to understand what I'm trying to say more clearly, and also it it's more entertaining to them as well.、Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. 
And so that leads you then to what is upcoming as your second book. Is that correct? 接下来我们会谈到 Skimmy 在明年六月之前会出版的第二本书。为什么说六月之前呢？待会听众朋友们，你会听到他讲这个 Q one Q two， 那就是 quarter one quarter two 的意思，就是第一个三个月跟第二个三个月，也就是说前六个月之前，他会出版第二本书。好，那这次的书呢，虽然说也是跟爱情有关，但 Skimmy 会以 novel 会以这个小说的方式来呈现。他说，他从还在念小学的时候就很爱写故事、写小说。你老师在前面讲课的时候，他都会继续在底下写，然后分给同学看呢。那这样也提到说啊，目前有很多研究显示，从孩子小的时候开始培养想象力，这个 imagination 跟创造力 creativity 是非常重要的哦。因为对于往后在 global perspective 在世界观的建立上会非常有帮助。那他们另外也讲到说啊，像这句话，想象力就是你的超能力。Imagination is your superpower. 就真的讲的很有道理，而且他们觉得这很适合成为一个 TED Talk 的演讲主题。那大家赶快来听听他们的分享吧。Yes, my second book is going to be published um Q1 or Q2 next year, and it's going to be about love again. But this time, it's gonna be a novel. It's gonna be a novel,、yes. which you really have a deep. Passion for kind of、yes. the literature and novels in that sense. Yes,、right? ever since I was in elementary school, I would just write novels. When teacher is teaching on stage, and I just be like writing my own thing and pass it to my classmates and ask them to give me some feedback. So yeah, that's incredible, Skimmy. That really, there's a lot of studies that say how important that is when you're young to develop your imagination and your creativity and kind of your global perspective on life as you. Live in this little kind of fantasy world. Yes, there's a saying. It actually goes like, "Imagination is your superpower." I love that. I feel like that's a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. And if it's not, it definitely needs to yeah. be. Yeah, that's great. So, if we can, then can we dive into your amazing proficiency now with your English? So, where did this all begin? 那访谈进行到这边，各位听众朋友想必已经发现 ，Skimmy 他的英文口述能力真的很不错哎。那他是怎么学的嘞？ Skimmy 说呢，他英文学习这条路其实是从他跟爸爸妈妈移居到加拿大的时候才开始的。他说以前呢，他这个幼小的心灵其实有被 traumatized， 有被受创过。那是怎么回事嘞？原来啊，他在上小学以前，父母有一次带他到美国去拜访亲戚朋友。那他们的小孩因为在美国出生长大，都是讲英文，所以 Skimmy 当时跟他们完全没有办法沟通。那那时候大人也都不以为意啊，想说，哎，就小孩嘛，玩一玩大家就熟了。但是对于小 Skimmy 来说，其实已经在内心造成某种程度上的伤害，因为对方讲什么他听不懂，那自己想要表达的，对方也不了解。他说后来只要有人跟他讲英文啊，他就是直接 refused， 直接拒绝跟他们讲话。那大家就赶快来听听 Skimmy 分享他这段儿时回忆吧。Well, it actually began when I moved to Canada with my parents, and actually, at first, I'm a little traumatized by English、mm-hmm. because back back when I was in um before elementary school or during during elementary school, my parents actually took me to the U.S. to fit、uh, to visit one of our family friends, and their kids are all born and raised in America, so they only speak English. And I was I was born in America, but I was raised in Taiwan, so my English was it was like at zero percent. So I couldn't really talk to them, and my like the the adults didn't really thought thought of it as a problem. They just think you kids, you just go play with it, like with each other,、mm. and at, like in the end, you guys will all get along. But no, it wasn't the case. I was kind of nervous to talk to them because I know what I'm trying to say. They wouldn't understand, and when they when they talk to me, I wouldn't be able to understand what they're trying to say as well. So yeah, I think it kind of freaked me out because my、mm. mom told me ever since then I would refuse to speak English, or when someone's trying to speak English to me, I would just refuse to talk to them. That's yeah. I I know that can be very. That puts you in that fight or flight mode. In yes.、That. Wow. So, what what changed? What kind of opened your mind back to English? That 前面讲到 Skimmy， 他小时候心灵受创，对英文很反感哦。那是什么改变他的想法嘞 ？What changed? 他说他后来家里决定要搬到加拿大的时候呢，他爸爸因为知道他的英文不好，所以想要把他送去上英文课。
，而且还不是初级班哦，是给他上那种 intermediate 这个中级班的。因为爸爸想说，这样的女儿就会 have no way out， 会没有办法，必须要强迫自己把嘴巴耳朵打开，好好练习。那虽然妈妈反对，但 Skimmy 最后也还是被送去这个班。只是呢，他都会翘课，东西放好就闪人，觉得 there is a way out。有办法哦，我可以翘课，不用待在教室里面。那不过他说，后来到了加拿大以后啊，真的是没有办法逃哎，没办法每天翘课啊。而且在那个英文环境下，他就必须要确实打开耳朵、嘴巴练习英文。他说，学校老师其实也都人很好，会带他去慢慢 embrace， 去接纳新环境，让当时十四岁的他，最后也渐渐的 let down her guard， 让他这个卸下心房，认识新朋友和新文化。那待会呢，大家有听到 John 提到说啊，十四岁是一个 pivotal time， 一个很关键的阶段哦。在那个年纪，学会 open up， 学会打开心房跟人家互动，是真的很重要。Well, at first, I think, cause when when I was about to move to Canada with my parents, and my dad was like, "Yo, girl, I know your English cannot like make you survive in in Canada, so I'm gonna send you to this um English class, and it's a intermediate English class, so like everybody has to speak English. It's mandatory.、Mm. And my mom's like, no, 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 I don't think she can handle this situation now, cause she, I know her, I know her personality. She would refuse. And then my my dad was like, well, if you give her no way out, she's she has to survive. And then, but actually, it turns out I have a way out. So I skip class every day. I'll just go to the <laughs> go go to the class, and I put my card there, and I just left, and I went to like shopping and stuff. So yeah, and <laughs> when I moved to Canada, I was just this girl who didn't really know how to speak English, and I had no way out because I、yeah. couldn't possibly skip school every day. So I was forced to. To actually make friends, and those teachers were re- really nice as well. So they they will um slowly ease me into this path, and I made some really good friends with like the Russian girl and the people from Congo and also the native Canadian classmates. So yeah, it kind of slowly helped me that that down my my guards and、yeah. really embrace that culture. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. How old were you at that time? Ah,、uh, I was in grade eight, so grade like fourteen. Okay, yeah, yeah. So about fourteen. Yeah, that's a that's a pivotal time of your life. So、mm, I'm、is. really glad that、uh, you found some beauty and and、uh, allowed yourself to open up to the language again. Yes. So, do you remember then any kind of cultural differences or any kind of funny translation stories over your years of English? 那聊了这么多，我们现在要来问问 Skinny， 他有没有遇过什么样有趣的文化冲突或是中文英文翻译嘞？他说有一次想要表达八个小时、好久、好长一段时间哦，这样子。他当时不知道怎么讲“小时”，想说“小时”的“小”英文是 “small”， 那“时间”那个“时”应该是 “time”， 所以八小时中文翻成英文的话，应该就是 “eight small time” 这样子吧。那后来他就想说，哎，不对啊，这样子很奇怪。后来就直接给他 Google， 才发现“小时”应该是要用 “hour”。H O U R 来表达才对哦。那大家记得吗？这个我们之前在前面的 N G 文有提过，跟一些其他相关的时间用法，可别忘记喽。Oh, there was a really epic mistake that I've made. A really <laughs> epic mistake. Yes, okay, let's do this. Okay, so I was trying to say something like eight hours at work is really a long day, but I didn't really know how to say hour back then. So, and um, in Chinese, it's 小时 So I just direct translated it to small time. A small time is a really long time. A small time, yeah. Oh that my. That was what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute, actually. That's that's. So did you say that for a long time, or or did somebody try to correct you? No, I think I I posted it, and I was like, um, it it can be right, so I googled it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the power of technology. Yes. So, can you share then a few kind of tips or any advice that you have? 那听了这些 Skimmy 分享有关学英文的有趣回忆之后，现在呢，我们要来问问他有没有什么 tips， 什么小 pebble 可以提供给大家做参考嘞。那这边呢，他就举了一个亲身例子来跟大家做分享。就在上个月，他受邀参加一个办在台湾的 YouTube conference， 这个集结很多世界各地 YouTube 营销人的官方会议哦。那所以大家都讲英文。
那身为台湾人的他呢，就有被请到台上去做演讲。不过因为 s k i m i 他没有做过全英文的演讲，让他当时整个是非常惊慌失措，想说啊，如果我文法讲不好，错这个错那个怎么办嘞？后来他就打给他爸妈，跟他们一起领完稿、练完习之后，他突然意识到说，哎，他要讲的这些都是有价值的 ，It has its value， 是有用的资讯。所以说真的，那些单字、文法啦，正不正确都是其次。不会影响到他要提供的这些资讯，再加上他又是台湾人，然后这个会议呢又在台湾，整个就很有主场优势啊，所以后来就 break through， 就突破了之前害怕的心理，充满自信的站到台上完成他的演讲。总之啊，我们就是要勇敢展现自信的一面就对了。那解释了这么多，还是直接来听 Skinny 分享比较实在。I've actually realized something that's really important, and it completely helped me to actually start to love English. It was um one month ago when I was invited to a YouTube conference, and it was a YouTube official event full of a bunch of YouTube marketing staffs from around the globe. So they all speak English, and as as someone who is Like as a Taiwanese YouTuber who were invited to、um, this event, I was asked asked to give a keynote speech,、mm-hmm. but like completely in English. And because I haven't really do a full English keynote speech or presentation ever since freshman year in university. At, at first, I was kind of scared, and I was like, "Ugh, what, what if I what if I say something wrong, or what am I supposed to say?" I was I panicked,、mm-hmm. so I called my parents and they helped me to put through a a a speech. And during my second time of practicing the speech, I realized something that is what I'm trying to say. The content itself, it it has its value,、mm-hmm. like it has its meaning. It's a useful information, and I know what I'm saying is meaningful. So actually, like grammar accuracy or like the vocabulary I use. Are all just minor technical details. It doesn't really change the fact that I am trying to tell you guys something as a human being that is useful. So, and also, I think partially it's because I'm in Taiwan, so I'm like, this is my land, and you guys <laughs> are the visitor. Yeah. So yeah, so I think that kind of like helped me to break through my former mindset and truly has the have the freedom to explore this. Foreign language world, yeah. I I really love that you you found that you've kind of concluded that to sum that up, you're saying you know actually the message is the most important. The, yes. The technical details, like you said so elegantly, you know the grammar structures and the specific vocabulary you use. That's actually it's not as as important. I think that's a really really good insight that、yes. you、uh, you found from developing that speech. Yes. So my advice to all the people who are trying to learn English is to be truly confident about what you have to say, because it's just like you're saying in man- Mandarin or whatever、mm-hmm. your mother tongue is. You know what you're saying has its meaning, and you know what you're saying. So just don't be afraid, because it's. It's just you're saying it a different language. It's not like no big deal. Yeah, that's really beautiful, Skimmy. I heard a wonderful quote as well, and、mm-hmm. it's、uh, when you speak to a man in his second language, you speak to his brain. But when you speak to a man in his first language, you speak to his heart. And so I think I always try to remind my friends, like, hey, remember you're speaking somebody else's first language. So、mm. I think、uh, the fact that you're even putting yourself in that position is is a really It's a beautiful thing, and I I hope that as we grow as a society, as a world, that people can remember that hey, you know, this is not your first language. Yes, yes. So that is wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. So my last question on Ng Ingwen is always、um, going back in your your younger life to a young Skimmy.、Mm-hmm. Would there be any any advice you give yourself about language learning? 那访谈最后呢，我们一样要来问问 Skimmy， 他有没有什么话想要跟小时候的自己说呢？他说啊，要听爸爸的话。斯基米说，他小时候很爱看书，各种文学小说他都会看，但就是只看中文不看英文。不管他爸怎么跟他建议说，你看英文书可以学到很多单字，不用在那边死背。但是斯基米他就是不看，看了只会想睡觉。不过现在长大发现，哇，以前爸爸讲的真的很有道理耶。所以，如果可以回到过去，跟以前的自己说说话，他会很想要努力劝小 Skimmy 说：“真的要听爸爸的话哦。”
。那我们赶快听听最后这段访谈内容吧。A young skinny. A young skinny. Okay. It would be listen to your father. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to dad. Yes, shout out to dad. Well, what did、uh, what did he say when you were young that you didn't listen to? So, because I really love reading, and mostly I read Mandarin books, and I love all types of literature, novels, and stuff. So, my dad, when we moved to Canada, my dad was like, "Do you want to try to read more English books as well? Because then, because you enjoy the story, and all the vocabularies will just get into your mind, and you won't." It it wouldn't be the same as you try to memorize the vocabularies from a dictionary or like a studying list. It would be truly yours because you understand like it's all like all of its meaning in different like connotations.、Mm -hmm. But I didn't listen to him because reading English books make me want to sleep. Yeah, they probably put you to sleep at the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's really something that if I could go back in time, I would I. Would. I want to make a change to it. Yeah, well, I I think you've come a long way, so hopefully he is proud of you and where you are now with your career and with your is, life. He is, he is. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for making some time out of your busy schedule. And where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram and YouTube just by searching Skimmy, and you can also find me on Facebook by searching Skimmy. Your online friend. Mm hmm. Skimmy. S K I M M Y. Yes. Skimmy. Yeah, wonderful. All righty. Well, thank you so much again, and we'd love to have you in the studio, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you for having maybe me. Maybe when you、uh, release your second book, you'll have to come sure. back. Sure. Maybe、Alrighty. I'll do an English version of my novel. Oh. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs>、no. She's ready. She could do it. <laughs> the market for her is <laughs> is wide. Yes. All right, Skimmy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All righty. That is our NG Ingwen show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. You can search NG Ingwen, or you can search NG English I C R T. And make sure to tune in each week, Wednesday morning from 6:30 to 7, and Wednesday night from 9 to 9:30. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. 好，那我们今天新平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线。English 在底线 ，I C R T。那大家也要记得，每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T 频道 F M 一百， FM100, 准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎大家上网搜寻西平方的攻其不备课程，或者是呢到我们西平方的官网，多读读一些有关 N G 英文的专栏文章，看看在 N G 英文里面的专栏有没有哪些是大家可以吸收学起来的一些小 p e o p l e 哦。我们下次见了，拜拜。